So hello, everybody. Sharon Faith here. I want to thank everyone for joining me. And uh, this week we have Charles Landry from Canada, and he's going to share his experience of renting and riding in Guatemala. So take it away, Charles. <laughs> Thanks. So, uh, so first off, I just wanted to kind of give you a quick rundown of who, who, who the heck I am. So, uh, so I work in, in the construction field, so I work long, long hours in the summer, and that allows me a little bit more freedom in the winter. So uh, that's where these, these trips have come from. So I've been doing uh, trips down south. I was in Belize the, the, in 2018, then did Guatemala in 2019, and then Belize again this year. Uh, just because it was a lot shorter time span that I had free. So uh, that's, I just went back to uh, Belize to see the northern section. Um, part of the reason I, I'm, I'm kind of happy to do with this presentation is you don't have to be a professional traveler to, to be doing these kinds of trips. Uh, this is my, literally my second trip abroad. And, you know, I went 1200 kilometers through the, uh, the country. So, uh, you know, anybody can do it. It's just the getting over the fear of the unknown and then you can uh, you can do these adventures. Um, so I'll start off by sharing my screen and uh, I'll show you the map and then we'll start doing the, um, uh, this is what I wanna share. Let me know if you folks see this. Yep. Perfect. So, uh, decently big country. Uh, so basically the main airport, international airport is in Guatemala City. So from Guatemala City, I just took a uh, taxi ride uh, right straight from the airport into Antigua. So where Greg is living uh, at the moment. Um, beautiful, beautiful uh, city. Um, Spanish colonial styling for a lot of stuff uh cobblestone streets it's it's a really really beautiful plot, uh, spot um and i'll show you a few pictures in a bit and uh just to give you a bit of an overview so i went from antigua i went west <laughs> my original plan was to go through smaller street or smaller roads through the mountain ranges here but uh a few a few accidental misturns uh, basically made me keep going on the on the main highway and it's it's actually a really really beautiful highway uh, not dirt road but it's just an absolute beautiful highway that you can just bomb along through through plantations and uh, I went down to the city and then the heat as soon as you get into the flatlands uh, towards the Pacific Coast it was just sweltering so uh, that was a bit of a cue to turn and, and go back towards the the north uh, and my destination was uh, Lake Atitlan, so that's where I ended up. And then basically, I'll show you in, in, in a bit the, the whole thing, but basically went through and did a figure eight. So it's Guatemala City, Antigua, Atitlan, to uh, Lankin and Simuk Champi. That'll show you a really beautiful river. And then out to Rio Dulce on the Atlantic coast. And then north to Tikal and uh, Lago Petan and El Aramate, where I stayed for uh, for that that section of that trip, and then went back down uh, through. <laughs> and this road is literally that straight. <laughs> it's it's one of those straightaways, but it doesn't really feel like it when you're going through because it has ups and downs, so you don't really see, you know, 50 miles of straight road in front of you. It just it just basically goes along. And then uh, here in the section here, uh, the um, Mag Tours was, was the, the people that I rented from had given me this little section to go through Shisek and uh, what's the, the other town? Uh, this is, it's a lot drier, more like desert type territory. Uh, being from New Brunswick in middle of winter, it was quite interesting to go through and it, it is quite warm, but it's, it, it is beautiful. And basically went through and all along through all the way back to Antigua. So let's look at the pretty pictures now. <laughs> so um, first off, uh, one of the things that uh, when I was trying to plan this trip is 
what to bring uh, because you're going to be on the motorcycle and you have to bring all of your stuff. So um, basically my, my package was a, that green duffel bag uh, looked on Amazon, found it on Amazon and it's just basically the carry on size of most air airlines. And uh, that was one of my other criteria is to be carry on only so that I, I don't lose luggage during the trip. Um, protection gear, uh, I was wearing just uh, steel toe construction boots I've got. This year I, I was wearing um, more adventure boots, leather motorcycle riding boots, but uh, for this trip I was wearing just a typical construction type boot and uh, knee pads and the black, uh, the black, uh, basically the chunk of, of a Velcro on the right side, that's a, a body armor. So I had a, a full top body armor and spine just to protect myself. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things you're in the middle of nowhere. If you get off the bike, you rather not break an arm and, or just even just get a good scratch. You just, it's, it's a good thing to bring. And uh, that backpack that has a three liter bladder, that is really, really nice when you're going through the desert sections, having, uh, Basically, just shy of a gallon of water on your back is is heavy, but it's highly recommended. Um, other little detail: I had the Spot Messenger with me, so that's a satellite messenger. Um, I've I've had it for multiple years, and actually, this year is the first year I actually did not renew the registration on it. Um, more or less, because actually, almost everywhere I went, cell phone reception was not an issue, and a $20 US SIM card, you're, you're connected to the world. Uh, so it was one of those things that I, I, I just couldn't, well, I couldn't justify it. There's so many new technology that works better than those spots now that basically that was my hesitation. And yeah, uh, Mexico City Airport, massive airport that basically I have to take a tram I had a little train between the two uh, terminals, so that was kind of cool. I'm um, from a small place, so uh, our airports is Terminal 1 and Terminal 1. <laughs> there's, there's no uh, big uh, delay between getting from one terminal to another. Yeah. Uh, Mexico City, um, you hear that it's a big city uh, until you see it from the air. It's a big city. Like, it's just sprawling. It's crazy. Beautiful spot. Just a uh, volcano uh, in the middle of uh, Mexico City. And then uh, started seeing uh, the volcano is basically flying down and starting to see the mountains is pretty, uh, is pretty cool. <laughs> so this is the start of Mexico City and the madness of Mexico City uh, driving. I see Greg uh, smiling and laughing. Uh, he, he, I'm sure he can attest. Uh, I would say that of all my trip, all of the roads were very, very calm, very, like, I was almost alone most of the time. The only place that was really chaotic was basically the, the corridor between Antigua and, and Guatemala City, and I'm happy I wasn't the one driving, especially it was at night. So... Uh, day one, we picked up the bike, and when I say we, uh, Tammy Perry, the... the uh, that was presenting last week uh, was in Antigua at the same time that I was in in uh, in the country. Uh, so the first day, my first full day in the country, uh, we actually both rented a motorcycle and we went for that uh, light blue run to Hobbit Tenango, a little site that I'll be showing in a bit. Uh, it was a nice warm up going through the mountains and and getting a feel for what it is driving in these little little streets. Um, one of the things that I had talked to um, Brad Risingler, I don't know if you folks know him, um, he had mentioned to me when I was planning my trip to make sure that I don't plan to be riding six, seven hundred kilometers a day. Uh, that is one of the big, big things that you're going to be doing 40 miles an hour on average, like 65 kilometers is a really good, like you're doing good mileage when you're doing 65 kilometers an hour. Uh, so that was one of those things that was confirmed with that little trip uh, around that is, it's beautiful and, and it's just, 
there's so many corners and so many views that you just slow down and also just places that you just completely get lost and you got to stop and look. Uh, so this was a little spot that we stayed in Antigua, beautiful spot. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember the name right offhand, but to be honest, almost all of them would look the same. Uh, this is, it was in the southwest corner of the, once I'm on the map, I could show you where it is, but it was a beautiful spot, uh, about six rooms, and I think it was like 25 US a night. Uh, so that was one of the things that uh, Guatemala, <laughs> I had forgotten when I did my trip to Belize again, uh, Guatemala is very affordable. Um, it's, if you look around, you can find $200 a night places. That's, that's everywhere. You can find fancy places. But, you know, I, I think I went all the way down to $20 a night in, uh, in El Ramate near Tikal. Um, it wasn't a fancy spot, but you know, I, I was able to find some, some decent spots. So yeah, just a funky, nice little interior garden. Um, and there's Tammy and, and I on the, on our little uh, motorcycles. So I had a 2013 um, Yamaha XT250. And she was on, I do believe a tornado, uh, the, the little Honda, 250 that they sell down there from from brazil i think they're they're really nice bikes um no complaints about the bike um i blew a fork seal on the yamaha about halfway in the trip and when i came back and told the guys they, they kind of roll their eyes and go ah oh, not again so it was a known a known hiccup on on the bikes it you know it's it's not a full on dirt bike and you, you load them up and they can it can be rough on the on the hardware so uh yeah that was the bikes, loved it. Um, pretty much no problems with it until I got to 10,000, like 10,000 feet or thousand feet around the, the lake. Uh, I was starting to get a little bit of uh, sputtering, but overall it was re it ran really well. So this is the view from Hobbit to Nango. Uh, Greg, uh, you can confirm that's not El Fuego, that would be the one south of Lake Atitlan, I think. I forget the name of the, the, the volcano is there. That is Volcan Agua. Volcan Agua, right, yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, just a, a, Hobbitanango is a small little, it's a tourist trap. Let, let's, let's be, I'll be honest with it, it's a tourist trap, but it's a really nicely done tourist trap. Um, you, I didn't feel any pressure to, to buy anything or there wasn't, um, it's, it's basically a group of people wanting to protect that area and trying to get money to protect the, the highland forest in that area. So that's, that was how they uh, decided to try to save money. One thing that I found quite cool is it might have been also the time of year that was there, but I would say almost three quarters of the tourists that were there were actually relatively local. Uh, so like people from Guatemala City, not as much as Americans and, 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 and you know, Germans and tour like my kind of tourists. It was, it was a local tour. So that was kind of cool to see. Yeah, just really fun. A little City bit. Folk. Say again? City folk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just city folk going into the into the into the village kind of thing. Uh, super, super steep. Like I cannot super steep driveway into the site um, for the day one driving in the mountains uh, going up. Uh, Tammy and I went up, and and about halfway I I stalled, and I was like, oh crap. I, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to take off again because it's it's just super super steep. But uh, we did it and it and it went up and uh, no problem at all. So there are even more um, volcanoes and Antigua would be just behind that brush uh, to the left. Yeah, just a nice spot. Just really really nice. Uh, typical street. Sorry for the pixelated video, but when we're talking about mountain roads, this is what I mean. So no guardrails and views and views and more views. 
And you can see there, I'm going 35, 40, that's kilometers an hour. So, you know, I'm, I'm just putting along and, and honestly, you can go a lot faster in some sections, but you come up to the, this exact situation, boyfriend taking a picture of the girlfriend in a corner. So you got to watch out. There's, there's always random stuff happening. Yeah. So this is Antigua. Um, the famous arch Santa Catalina. Um, it's, it's one of those sites in the, in the city that's super popular and you see everybody taking pictures. Um, and this is one of the main sites for the festival that we were just talking about. Great, right, Greg, from what I understand. Uh, yeah, for Semana Santa, which is the whole week of Easter, uh, every day there's a procession that goes around the city and, uh, it's, I mean, you're elbow to elbow, I mean, with, <laughs> with, with the crowd. I mean, Gua or Antigua, uh, normally the, the population is about 50,000 people, but during Semana Santa, it goes up to 200,000. Chaos. Chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing to, to notice there is the Cobble Street. So every street that's not just like a walkway that that's all the streets are like that um so i'm sure the uh, mechanics have lots and lots of uh, suspension work uh from from that town uh it's it's quite a quite a sight to see uh but as as a civil i work in the civil engineering world and i kind of look at that and go it's been held, holding up for a few hundred years is pretty impressive so it's good yeah just another view of the arch and don't be shy if you have any questions, we're, especially if we're not a big group, uh, basically uh, just ask away. Sorry, Charles, what time, what time of year were you there? So this is, uh, I, I landed on February 5th and I was there for two weeks. Yeah, really, yeah, really nice time of year. At least I, I had one day of light rain uh, in Uspantan. Uh, the rest of the time was beautiful, 25 degrees in Antigua, and, and uh, it was only warm when I got into the, the desert section. Uh, Rio Dulce and Tikal was also warm, like 40 degrees. So what is that, 100 and, 105? Yeah, it was, it was hot. Like, it was hot. Uh, Central Park, Antigua. Just uh, Tammy, Tammy, uh, I don't think she would have let me go by and not take a picture of, of me with the, uh, the fountain. <laughs> Um, one really cool thing about Antigua, it's, it's an old, uh, city. Uh, there's, there's a lot of historic sites. There's a lot of stuff and it's kind of cool. There's, there's multiple generations of churches that basically they built a church, an earthquake destroyed it. They built another one beside it. Another earthquake destroyed the next one. And then, then they're all like half rebuilt or half in collapse and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of cool if you like a, a historical architecture. Uh, it's quite a nice place to uh, to sightsee. And this I, I like. So it might be hard to see over the shared video, but that's like a chunk of building that collapsed, and then they just built around it. So they just continued the wall and just built built around the wall. So it's kind of cool to see. They just just. Build around, don't need to, to take everything apart and, and rebuild, it's just built around. So uh, Antigua, all good things have come, uh, must come to an end. So uh, basically the next few pictures is my trip uh, heading towards uh, Lake Atitlan. Uh, like I was saying, uh, my, my original trip, I was supposed to go through Acatenango and go sort of towards Padzun um, that you can see in the center of that map. But uh, I just missed a bunch of corners, uh, more or less just having fun and bombing along on a road and just having fun in, the, fun in the corner and then stopping to look at the map and realizing I had, you know, I had missed the corner 20 miles before. So I just kind of went, ah, whatever. I, you know, it's a beautiful weather. I got lots of fuel. So keep on, keep on trucking. So this is uh, at the base of... Akatenango Volcano. Uh, sorry for the pixel. I don't know why. But <laughs> so uh, just basically a nice 
if they were actually burning uh, some of the shrubs uh, below me. Uh, just basically, just a really, really nice um, farming area and the volcano is in my background, in the, in my back in this picture. Uh, it's a really big hike to get to the top. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, next time I go to, to um, Guatemala, I do want to do is, is do some of the hikes. Um, uh, it was one of those things. It's, I wanted to see an overview of the country and, and next time it'll be a, a more um, focused adventure uh, next time. Yeah. So this is uh, what I was meaning about a beautiful road. So I was just bombing along on this road and it's just brand new pavement, awesome views and just having fun blasting through the, uh, the countryside. And uh, yeah, when you're, when you're expecting to go 60 and you're going closer to, or I should say, expecting to go 40 and you're you're going 60 65 on these beautiful empty roads uh i just kept on going and that's part of the reason i i, I miss my my corner is just basically having too much fun so this is uh coming back uh north so from that loop down and then coming back up and this is the first site of lake atitlan um beautiful beautiful spot uh it's a it's a volcanic crater lake. So there's one river, like a proper river going into it, but there's no river coming out of it. Uh, so it's kind of weird. They've got some issues with it. If you want to read up on, on uh, geography and environmental issues with that uh, situation, but it's a, uh, it's a really, really nice place. Um, and I spent two nights on the lake, one in, um, I'll show on a map in a moment. And then, and so one on the south, uh, sorry, on the north shore and then one night on the south shore. Actually, I'll switch to that map and I'll show you. So a picture that we were looking at just a moment ago is from right here. Actually, specifically right there. You can see there. So then I went around the lake, uh, totally random. Part of the reason I went through here is uh, I was looking at a video uh, that Brad had done and he had stopped at Commodore Volver Volver. And right across from that, there was a beautiful view of the lake. That's just awesome. So it, that was like a, a, a bit of a, a destination that I wanted to go through. And it ended up going through this road would, would get me there. So uh, Panajal is Panajashal is the one of the big cities on on the lake uh that's where i parked my motorcycle so i'm trying to find the spot so at the main basically at the boat yard uh trying to find it right here so this is the main ferry dock for uh, panajasal uh, you can't, it, it, people only. So, uh, talking to different people, talking to, to mag tours, they had told me, so this is a boat storage area, actually just right here, I should show. And I spent eight us, maybe 10 us dollars to park the bike literally under the tree. And, and basically I grabbed my stuff and walked down to the, to the ferry. Uh, one of the things about the ferry, I had been warned by Tammy. So locals pay 10 quetzales. Tourists, uh, or even less than that sometimes. Uh, and they'll often try to get you to pay like 30 quetzales to get onto the, the ferry. Uh, but basically, I, I do believe that's what he had said. Like I showed up and he's like, oh, 30. And I was like, no, 20. And he kind of like smiled and just, oh, okay, fine. And, you know, he took my 20. Uh, I think it's fair, personally, you know, comparing me with my big bag, my helmet, all my junk, you know, and I'm there for one night compared to the 75 pound little tour local that, you know, is taking 10 inches on the, on the bench. I was taking a lot of room in the boat. So it was fair. It was a, a, a good run. And, uh, 
schedule is really loose. Uh, you know, that's one of the things uh, just, just basically to know, just you're not going to be, it won't be leaving exactly at the time that you think it's going to leave. Just, just take your, take your easy. And then I spent one night in, uh, in uh, Santa Cruz, um, beautiful spot. And then uh, the next day I took the ferry back to Pananchasal, picked up the motorcycle and went around the lake to stay in San Pedro. Hopefully I'm not going too fast uh, for you folks. I'm just seeing that I'm already 25 minutes in and I haven't even done uh, <laughs> half of the trip. So I'll, uh, I'll go through uh, a little bit faster in the pictures and don't be shy if you have questions, I'll, uh, I'll answer them. So this is the view I was talking about from the uh, corner store. Uh, totally worth the detour. Uh, it's really, really nice spot. And I had a bag of chips and a pop from the corner store across just to, to enjoy the view with. Yeah, and that's the view from, from the store. Boat ride on the lake from Panajasfel to uh, Santa Cruz. Uh, the boats are packed. Uh, I teased one of the, the ladies that was behind me. The boat's not full until you're nervous. Uh, it's, they pack them, they, they, they get them, they money, there's money's worth. Uh, but if the weather's good, you know, there's no real danger. The, the, the guys are, know what they're doing. There's uh, the ferry at Santa Cruz, uh, sorry, in, um, yeah. And uh, stereotypical spot, probably most of the little villages look the same. You got those tuk-tuks that go up the hill and I'm quite impressed at how tight, like how imp they can climb like really, really steep hills um, and, and still go up. Uh, and Guana Perdida, um, it's right on the wharf. It's a very popular spot. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of cheaper places to stay, but it was a, a quite nice place. I really enjoyed it. So uh, that's why I stayed one room. Most of the, yeah, everywhere I, wait, I, I went, I stayed in a room and not like in a dormitory. So I did spend a little bit more for, for rooms. You know, you're, you're spending 30, 35 US for a room compared to spending maybe 15 or 10 or 15 US for a dorm. It's worth it. You just don't have to deal with drunkenness and, and loudness and everything. Um, yeah, steep climb. That's, that's into the, the town from the wharf. And just typical view, dogs everywhere. Uh, around the lake, the dogs are uh, a little bit more healthy than uh, other places, but you still gotta watch them. Like, you know, there's mean ones. A lot of them are, are quite nice though, but some of them are mean. Typical view, really nice spot. Just the street views of there. It's, it's all street, tight little streets that go up. That's the wash station for the uh, town. That's where people do their laundry. And yeah, proper steep hill climb to get into the village from the, the water. It was really cool. So can anybody guess what license plate would be on that motorcycle? I'm gonna uh, guess Canada. It is got to be New Brunswick. Close. It's Newfoundland. Uh, it's Tammy's bike. So that's yeah. Tammy Perry's bike. I was sitting there on the dock, and and I see this Kawasaki KLR motorcycle in Guatemala parked on the side. I was like, No, it can't be. I gotta go look. So I walk down to the motorcycle and look at the bike, and lo and behold, it's uh, Tammy Perry's old bike that she drove from uh, Newfoundland. Uh, all the way to Guatemala in 2014, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, it's it's down there, and she had given it to a, a local because uh, the import duties would have been too much for her to like the the fine to get it back. So she just gave it to one of the locals, and and he's been using it ever since. Yeah, I'll speed up here so I don't run out of time bar restaurant at the hotel there really nice spot uh, a lot of young uh younger yoga type people in there i think that's a lot of what the lake is um yeah you just gonna run with it and they're they're not one of the annoying people i'll put it this way like the yoga crowd i can totally deal it's a whole lot better than the cancun drunken frat bros 
I'll put it that way. Uh, that's the public dock in uh, Panajachal. So now to head uh, north and into the warmer and mountainous region. Uh, again, the, the hill climbs are just awesome. Uh, I wish I had a fuel injected motorcycle going through these these mountains. Uh, I won't play that. I'll I'll skip the videos and and you folks can have a look at them uh, in the later on. Uh, this is the next uh, town uh, on the other side of the lake in uh, San San Pedro. Yeah. I didn't want to miss mess up the names. There's there's a lot of different towns and and actually it's funny because there's a lot of towns that have the same name. The only difference is you look like it's San Pedro de la Laguna and then you can have like San Pedro the Quiche or whatever. So you have to make sure to have the full name. If not, you'll you'll be all over the place. Yeah. Just kids playing in the backyard. It was kind of cool. The, I went to the top of the hostel there and uh, just just getting the local local crowd. It was kind of cool. Yeah, I liked the town. It was quiet. Um, I, it it felt as if the time I went, I, well, I knew I was a little bit in the lull for tourism. Like I wasn't there during March break and I wasn't there during Christmas. And I liked traveling that time because you still get all the services, but uh, it's a little bit less crowded and often the prices are a little down. But yeah, just really nice place. Um, it, it's one of those things, you know, uh, um, and I, I'll say it's a nice place and it's beautiful. At the same time, there is a reality that, you know, on day one, we were going through the town and we went through a, a, a wet section on the road. And I didn't say anything to Tammy at that moment, but it was raw sewage. And it was one of those kind of like, Oh yeah, okay, yeah. You're in a beautiful place. You you see beautiful, but infrastructure is lacking. And then if you you know, it's it's a reality of a developing country. Some of the dogs are super cute and relatively friendly. I I avoided touching most of them, but they're they're nice. It's just cool to to see that they're just all over the place. So, this is uh, the kind of hot shower that you may uh see hot water <laughs> um all i can tell you learn from my mistake don't try to adjust it while in the shower <laughs> uh uh my knees my knees partially buckled i'll put it this way it was <laughs> it's uh it's a scary scary setup <laughs> Uh, so that's basically cold water go that goes into, well, basically imagine a hairdryer and then hot water comes out of it. That's basically what it is. And you can see that the wiring is not to uh, North American code. Um, and yeah, just, just they work. Uh, just don't touch it. <laughs> that's the only thing. It suicide showers. Yeah, yeah, suicide showers. I, I, I saw them in a few locations. The first one was my education and then the other ones went well. <laughs> Typical backyard view from the, from the hostel. Just a really nice spot. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's, it's, it's a nice spot. I'll skip the video. Yeah, this is one of probably one of my favorite views of the of the trip. It just ended up being just a really nice day and nice trip. Um, I, from what I understand, Atitlan is is sort of like in a in a hole for weather, and it's almost always nice. Like a, the, it's a really really beautiful beautiful spot, and they don't get bad weather too too often, so it's really nice. Uh, if you like corners, if you like switchbacks. I highly recommend going to San Pedro. Uh, it's, as you can see, it's that times, I didn't count them, probably 25 or 30 of them that you're just zigzagging between to, to get down into the lake from the top of the mountain. And there you can see the, the switchbacks going down the mountain. Yeah. I'll skip that. So another view from a, a paddock from the top of the hill, and that's more or less about the highest area where I started having trouble with the uh, with the carburetor. Um, I think I'm around 11,000, just under 11,000 feet there. And the bike was a little bit down on power, but really not that bad, honestly, for, for, for the elevation. 
the streets can be quite tight. <laughs> so that's a that's a local bus, just basically the the typical bus that runs the streets and they just take their time and they make it work. Yeah. Construction area went pretty well. So now I've skipped into the mountain. So I've went, went over the mountain range and into a, a large valley and this is where it starts to be uh, a lot warmer, uh, a lot drier, uh, pine forest instead of you know, more jungle type weather, um, but beautiful spot. Uh, the roads were in really good shape, uh, pavement for the most part, uh, and then like really good pavement, like new pavement for, for a good, good part of it. So it was really nice to, to drive and just really smooth. <laughs> uh, going through a town and, uh, and just the smell of bake, like a really fresh bread caught my, my nose and I turned around and stopped in this bakery and, um, I will say my Spanish is very limited. I, I did 90 days of Duolingo or 100 days of, of Duolingo before going on the trip. So, you know, cuatro cuesta, you know, I can, a few questions here. But anyways, I, I started talking to the lady there and I was like, so how much is a muffin? She's like, one quetzales. Oh, okay. So how much is a croissant type thing? One quetzales. And I think I asked like the third thing and she's like, one quetzales. So I kind of got the hint from the third one of, everything's one just like what do you want <laughs> so uh, i gave her a fiver and uh, grabbed a, a, a bunch of these stuff awesome you know from the cooked that morning it was baked this morning it was awesome it was really really good food yeah and yeah just to tell like you know uh, one quetzales is what 15 cents or like 10 cents so very very cheap I, I i know the numbers in canadian so it's 17 cents canadian i i'd, I'd have to do the math from that to, to give you an american but yeah so this is uh, uh east of uspantan so uspantan up to uspantan felt like just regular roads and just going through country but from uspantan to koban uh that was like back road like it felt proper back road uh and you'll see what i mean it it goes through what looks like a lot of mining area where they they do a lot of uh aggregate extraction um and the roads were proper basically like quarry roads or just yeah country roads um just basically bombing along it was really fun uh rough it tested the suspension on the bike, but it was it was good fun. And you can see there, just a smooth dirt road. Uh, one of the things you're coming, you're driving along, and you kind of going, "Oh crap, am I on the right road, or am I going in the middle of nowhere?" And then you'll meet a bus that's on the road, and you go, oh, "Okay, yeah, no, it's that's this is the main road. This is the way to to go through." So this is um, Lankin. So to go back to the map. Uspantan right here. This is what I mean by this section that was a little bit more con like uh, back road mining area that felt a lot more mine road. And actually, this is, this is one of those random things that I had noticed on Satellite View. It's a big landslide, like a humongous landslide. And that's the corner that I had to picture the going through around. It was kind of cool to see it's just just one big landslide. But um, going through, Koban is uh, one of the big, bigger city in the cent central part of uh, the country. But then I'm showing Lankin. And Lankin, the reason I was in Lankin was for Simuk Shampi. I'll show you some pictures of that. So uh, yeah, nice place. Uh, very backpackish, uh, yoga retreat, a lot more younger crowd there. Um, it's, it's the destination, I would say, for um for the younger um hostile type crew it was fine i i really enjoyed it um you just basically got to be careful the prices can be uh sometimes a little bit high if you if you're not careful basically with some of the places are expensive for for what you get 
uh, this is in Simuk. One of the kids was just playing around. Uh, they sell that aluminum sheet that he's got in the bucket is actually um, homemade chocolate that's literally just cocoa crushed down with sugar in it. Um, and it was delicious. Uh, I bought I bought a few and, and yeah, it's really cool. The, the one thing that was really interesting, it's not like milk chocolate. It doesn't melt in high temperature, at least not as much as regular. Like it was in my backpack and it didn't just dis get destroyed. It stayed uh, in its sort of granular state. Uh, Mirador going up the climb. Uh, I thought I was having a heart attack about halfway up. It's a, it's a big climb and you're at higher altitude. So it, it hits you a little bit hard. Uh, and it's all worth to go and have this, this look of where you're going to be swimming in a bit. Uh, so this is Simuk Champi. Long story, I can look online, you can find the information, but it's a really beautiful, really, really calm river that actually has a river underneath it. And uh, it's a really nice place to, to have a swim. I'll skip the video. Like I said, I'll share the album of a picture. You can see all me having fun in the water and a bunch of other tourists. And this is the little hiking trail to go to the cavern. So I'll, I'll let that video play so you can see. I oh, did the cave tour. Yeah, yeah, I did the cave tour. Very good. So that's the Caban uh, cave tour. Uh, it's about a half hour, less than a mile in. You, I, I don't have the numbers, but it, it'd be probably about three quarters of a mile in that you, you go in as a group and there's ropes and you, there's a little bit of swimming, but most of the time you're, you're touching the, the ground and it's candle lit, as you can see. Uh, really, really fun, totally worth it. Uh, the w water is warm, I'd say, 20, 25, that would be 70, 75 ish. Like it's swimmable. Like you're not freezing your, your, your ass off. Like most ca caverns. I'm from an area where caverns are four degrees, like, you know, just above freezing. So there it's nice that it's warm. This is the little, uh, dirt road, uh, down to Simuk. Um, just beautiful road. Uh, you'll see there's a few sections that are steep and they've built these concrete grips into the, into the street and it's kind of cool to, yeah, it doesn't want to play well at least. But anyways, yeah, just grips to go up the hill. It's quite, quite steep in a few places. So this is um, between Simuk Shampi and Rio Dulce. So going towards the Atlantic coast. So this was Simuk, beautiful river. So I did this, and this is a back road. Like it's, you're into the mountains. Uh, it's been improved in the last few years because of a hydroelectric project on the uh, Eastern end uh, that I kind of like, I, I, I hadn't read about or I didn't know about until I went across the bridge and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, beautiful spot. Uh, probably one of my highlights for, for views. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of my, helmet camera video of this area was all fogged out because it is warm like it's it she, she it's starting to get warm yeah but yeah just beautiful spot this you're you're on the ridge you're, you're often right at the top of the ridge or just just below the ridge and you're you're kind of like flip-flopping from one side to the other it's it's really fun so this is when you start seeing the delta and Ligo isabella so mountain, 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 until you reach Chulak and then you start seeing this uh, Parque Natural Boca del, well, that's basically a big delta of Lago Isabella. So flatland, farming land. And this is the, <laughs> yeah. So infrastructure is not always up to North American standard. I'll let this play and hopefully you can see. Have a look, do you see these steel plates? Well, there's a reason for those steel plates is because of those. <laughs> so, so you gotta be careful when you're driving along, there's, there's some damage on the roads and you gotta be careful where you're going. Um, but on a motorcycle, that's one of the big, big advantages. You only need four inches wide to cross and you're, you're fine. Um, I mentioned earlier at the start of the, the presentation some 
tolls. Uh, so just after that bridge, I was going along on the dirt road and I see two guys or three guys that were standing in the, in the road. And one of them starts to pull a string and it's a, it's a flag, like a string with flags on it. And you're like, Oh, what the heck? Well, those are illegal tolls. It's just locals that are trying to make a buck. Um, the first place I stopped, he asks, he asked for, uh, five quetzales or 10 quetzales. So like a buck 50, like, you know, not a whole lot of money. So pretty much without any hesitation, it's just, yeah, here, like, you know, whatever. But what pissed me off about half an hour later, I come around the corner and another group of people were basically doing the same thing, blocking the road. And there I actually sort of, uh, I kind of went to the guy. I was like, come on, man. Like, 20 minutes ago, I just spent 10 there. Like, what, what are you doing? And uh, he was asking for 20. And I said, no, I'll give you 10. And I, I didn't have a 10 on me. I actually had only a 20. So I asked him for change. So, and he gave it to me. So that kind of tells you like, that, you know, they don't have a knife to your, to your neck. It's just kind of like, they're trying to make a buck. Uh, unemployment's really, really bad in that area. So, yeah. One of the main reasons that they do that is that they actually voluntarily go out and repair the road because there is no uh, infrastructure to repair the roads. So they'll voluntarily do that and then they'll generally ask for money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so this is uh, in Rio Dulce, um, so on to the Atlantic coast. Um, Castillo San Felipe. Uh, it's a super, super, super old um, fortress that was trying to, it got run over by pirates or whatever era, but uh, it was Spanish built to, to try to protect the uh, lake from, from piracy. Um, have a look online. I, I, there's a million websites that can tell you more details about it. And I'm just trying to, to do a, an overview, but it's right at the neck of the, the river where it's very, very narrow. So it was a strategic location. It was cool to see. So this is uh, Rio Dulce. Uh, it's a small town, but it's a very important small town. It's a, it's one of the um, economic uh, center, if, if you want, of that little, little region. Um, and uh, it's loud, uh, a lot of traffic, as you can see. Um, and it was, uh, it was an, uh, I was happy that I spent a little bit more and got an air conditioned room. Uh, it was 40 degrees Celsius uh, when I, while I was there. So that's 100 and 105. It's over a hundred degrees. It's, it's warm. Yeah. Yeah. The asphalt was soft. <laughs> Big bridge over the uh, river. It's a little girl in there. And yeah, just, just busy traffic, 18 wheeler. And full Pentecostal church across from the hotel that was blaring music and singing uh, until uh, not that late, like a few, it lasted about an hour and a half. I, I was afraid that it was going to last longer, but it, it ended in a, at a reasonable time. So this is, uh, you can see in the lower portion of that picture, uh, Lago Isabella, uh, that's Rio Dulce at the corner there. And then I, I won't, I won't lie. I bombed up uh, from, so very, very, I drove more or less top speed for, from Rio Dulce all the way to, uh, to the Tikal region. Uh, there's a lot of beautiful stuff to see, but that was my longest day uh, at 200 and a little over 100 and like 150 miles. I'd, I'd have to look at the, the kilometers exactly, but it was, it was a long day of, of driving on, on, or I, I, sorry, I'll say it again. It was a long haul, but it was a quick ride because it was good pavement. It wasn't, it wasn't rough mountainous road. It was, it was a quick ride up. Uh, this is in El Ramate, small, it's the last proper village town before you get into Tikal. Uh, and I found a little place there uh, that I stayed at that was dirt cheap. Um, you do get what you pay for, um, but I really enjoy the place I stayed. Uh, this was the, <laughs> so this was the free dock that you could go and hang out and have a swim. And 
so the sign says basically wharf the right hand wharf costs five dollars to go on to and and basically the other one was really nice this one you were walking and half of those planks weren't nailed down anymore so you gotta you know be careful and you go out but it was really nice to, to swim in the 40 degree weather or 100 degree weather so this is tikal um basically capital of one of the largest mayan civilization uh many many years ago um and uh it's well worth the visit um i went early in the morning so i left basically at daybreak uh to try to be there as quick as early as possible and i was there until about 1 p.m and then the heat uh, you know it was like 105 110 i, I was melting uh and i only saw probably a quarter of the site uh but it's it's worth the visit it's amazing spot um they've done a lot of work to restore a lot of the sites um you can't climb on everything but you can climb on most things um and it's it's pretty cool to see like there's it's a big 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 site and they're still discovering a bunch of sites uh there is tours um i opted not to do a tour uh, more or less because i had read a lot on tikal before taking off and um and and a lot of the places when you go into the the locations you can you can read up about it on the on the little boards um more or less it's it's a question of freedom i i, I didn't really want to be stuck with a group and having to, to follow and especially with the heat wave that i was i wanted to be able to call it quits whenever i wanted yeah and just yeah uh the the, the broken up sites they have wooden uh, stairs that go up and other sections where the stairs are still decent you can go up uh, but let's just say the occupational health and safety was not very strong 2000 years ago so some of those uh, uh, stairs are uh, not uh, building code uh, compliant <laughs> a lot of wildlife it was kind of cool to see uh, you know you get howler monkeys and spider monkeys and a bunch of different things going around so if you're there at the right time of day and year um you'll you'll have a, a wilderness exp experience at the same time and they're still digging more sections they're see, finding more and more stuff so that's the entrance uh it's a a long haul from the entrance to the site and you got to be careful uh i was warned before they they it's not all the time but they'll time you so they write down the like the time when you go into the gate and when you get to the other end they sometimes will stop people and look at the time and if it took you not enough time to go through they can give you a speeding fine and from what i understand it's it's quite a bit of money for the speeding i don't know the whole details i was just warned follow the speed limit within the park uh because it can be expensive yeah that's the wharf after a long day in Tikal. I went out and hung out with uh, some of the locals and, and some of the tourists and just hanging out in the water. It was really nice. And just, yeah, just a beautiful spot. Yeah. <laughs> so the dog and bird pets of the hotel that were just playing and it was kind of cool to see just a, a dog playing with a bird. And there was a duck not that far away and there was another there's just animals everywhere cats and stuff yeah there's a cat uh typical breakfast really really good food uh i ate well everywhere um i didn't i didn't stop myself from eating anything um the only thing i did do is always drink either bottled water or filter the water that i that i would drink um that's the only thing uh f you know that's fresh cheese in there i didn't stop myself from eating any kind of dairy product or anything i wasn't sick um i had i did take emodium for maybe two or three days right at the start um, i wouldn't say i got sick i would say it was more of a change of diet going from n never eating plantain and you you know papaya and a bunch of different things just upping your fiber you'll you'll might have some issues but uh yeah this is the insight 
Sayache, there's a river but no bridge, and you've got two options for a ferry. So Sayache, so this is Flores, Tikal area, and then I headed south, and right here in Sayache, you got two options. You can either take a, what I'll call a long boat, like a, like a really, really, really big canoe, or you can wait for the, the vehicle um, ferry, but on a motorcycle, no question. You just jump on this because this will run like 10 times when the car ferry will go once. Like it's, it's a lot faster and very cheap. I'm, I'm trying to remember, I think it was like five Quetzales, that'd be under a dollar. So it was nice. So this was Andy. Um, when I was in Tikal uh, that evening, I'm, I'm hungry. I go out to a restaurant and I see this motorcycle at the, in, in front of the restaurant. So I, I park beside it and go into the restaurant. And then I notice that Andy has a helmet on his, on his table. So I just basically say hi. I could tell that he was more than likely not local uh or not even like a an expat kind of thing like he was a proper tourist and come to find out he was from germany and uh doing a trip from uh, mexico basically long like as far as he could go uh in that two or three t months that he had so his game plan he bought a cheap little 125 cargo in mexico and was driving all the way down to panama and might sell his bike there and then buy another one in, in Colombia, uh, being probably cheaper than trying to, to cross over with the bike. Uh, and uh, so I had my um, meal with him that night and the next morning uh, I'm driving along and here I come up to this uh, little Cargo 125 going along with this guy on it. So I just stopped and said hello and then we, uh, we rode for probably about two hours on that really, really straight section of road uh, we shared the road for for that section, and then when we got to the bottom, he was going east, and I was going west. So we we broke. Uh, and it was just kind of fun to meet, you know, travelers on the road. Yeah, uh, really fun roads. Uh, so this is just north of Koban. Um, basically, beautiful, beautiful asphalt road into the mountains. Loved it. Um, basically the only thing you got to be careful is, is animals and other cars. Um, uh, it wasn't as bad. So right there, you can see a dog in the corner. Um, it, I would say, I would say, uh, there is road hazards that you got to be careful uh, of, but I felt a lot safer on the Guatemalan roads than I felt that I feel when I'm in Belize. Belize is a lot more accessible for a tourist, but the roads are chaotic. Uh, the buses are maniacs uh, in Belize compared to Guatemala because the roads are so rough and in mountainous, you as a motorcycle tend to go faster than the crowd. So you, you're, you're able to break away. So um, we're coming up to the hour. Sorry, uh, Sharon, I might bust a few minutes, but uh, so this is um, Posada Real Calcha uh, that I stayed at for one night and small world just to tell you how people are friendly so this is Gustavo and Jan uh, the owners of the place uh, he lived actually in Seattle uh, a few years so here I am in Koban uh, day three or four of my trip and um, I'm running out of money so I have to find an ATM so I come into the town and I see McDonald's and just just to have a place to park I pull into the McDonald's parking lot park my my bike and start looking on google maps to find a an atm that can can uh service and there's a mall just behind the mcdonald's so i'm i'm doing this and i'm starting to rip my gear off gustavo walks up to me i don't know this guy and just started started chatting up and oh hey you traveling yeah so uh super friendly guy starts chatting up tells me you know he was living in the states for a while and that he lives in Karcha and he was just in Koban for, for uh, running errands or whatever. And he's like, oh, so you're, you're, are you staying in, in this area, you know, in the near future? And I'm, well, no, I'm not staying there. I'm going to Lakin. He's like, well, you have to come to my hotel. You have to come to my hotel. I'm like, well, I can't tonight because I'm going to Lankin, but 
I will be in, in Coban again like next week in, in a few days. He takes, pulls out a pack of um, matches and writes the address of his hotel in there. And he's like, and he gave me his uh, WhatsApp uh phone number the whole the whole nine yards and he's like you have to come to my place it'll be my treat you'll be able to meet the people so the next week i uh i called him while i was in tikal started organizing it with him and uh he hosted me and super 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 nice started talking about he owns land in in the uh rio dulce area and and uh, you know his his daughter is living in the states, and that he wished that she she'd come back to uh, to Guatemala, but he he understands why and all that kind of stuff. And uh, basically, he's just super super nice guy, and you could tell he's involved with his community. So the shirt that he's wearing, the Ria Calcha Hotel, well, he he is also the host and sort of like the major sponsor of the local second division soccer team or football team in in their world. So uh, actually, that evening we ate. Uh, supper with that football team and the soccer team and uh, it was just cool to to see you know just authentic friendly people uh another uh occupational health and uh safety uh is not exactly always the ex same as north america you need an extension cord no worries just just wrap her up and electrical tape it and it works it works so this is uh, the last uh, day of riding. So from uh, the Coban region all the way back down to Antigua. So this is the section I went through the desert and very, very hot, dry area. You can see right there, this is a lot drier um, mountainous region. So this is uh, the Rabinal area. Uh, I'll try to show you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got multiple. So Koban, where I stayed, and then this, the, the pictures I'm showing you right now, this is Rabinal Salaman Salama area, and then basically back into the mountains uh, in a bit. But yeah, very, very warm, very dry, uh, but beautiful spot. Uh, it, was, it was cool to see. I would not want to go there through there their dry season or their their warm season uh it's it was pretty warm um greg might be able to give you more details on it but basically it's a really weird road from from rabinal down to antigua it's a it's a failed development project so so you'll be driving for say two miles on perfect asphalt as you can see in that that screen capture and then you're onto a 10 foot wide gravel road for about two miles and then back to a wide, beautiful road and then back to a, a narrow. It's, it's really, really weird. And it's, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of fraud uh, 10 years ago, just after the civil war, where a lot of international money was co coming into the country. And <laughs> let's just say they, they organized to spend as much money on the project without the project ending up on the right, time but for dirt bike for for motorcycle people uh it's really nice because you you get a break and can bomb along on these beautiful empty roads and then a little bit of a break onto uh onto dirt road uh perfect example of like failed development uh this uh, i read up about the, the bridge a little while ago so big storm went through the town destroyed the, the existing bridge they got money to build a bridge, but it seems as if they built the first section and then nothing was built further than that. There's a little Bailey bridge next to it. That's the main bridge, but yeah, just one of those. It's, it's interesting to see. And it's, it's part of the nitty gritty under the skirt of, of a developing country. There's sections that are interesting. Uh, mountainous region uh, for people that don't live in mountainous area, that's a runaway lane. So, in the places where there is enough traffic, they actually do build these just like they do out west. Uh, being that I work in the civil engineering world, it was, it was one of those random things that I enjoyed uh, seeing. So basically it's for trucks that run out of brakes, they can take that lane and slow down without crashing into other people. And that's basically a wrap around to Antigua. 
uh, the big, big, big market in Antigua. Um, you can buy pretty much everything. You can buy, buy bootleg DVDs of Bollywood movies or pairs of jeans for five bucks or little purses, um, food, everything. Um, basically anything under the sun can be bought there, including live chickens and, and, and lukewarm meat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, everything, everything under the sun's for sale, basically. Yeah, just, uh, it was nice, um, just basically going through and seeing all the little different things, and yeah, there's a live chickens for sale. And yeah, clothing. This is the Nimpot. Um, so the other market was more um, tourist trap type stuff and just, you know, a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, even locals would probably buy some, some, well, the locals would probably buy food there. Greg can probably confirm that. Um, but this is Nimpot where it's a, it's a cooperative <coughs> market where um, the locals can sell their artisanal products. Um, so there's, um, and I can't even start to describe everything that's in there, but all the pottery and everything and, and a lot of the clothing. So if you look at the, um, the knitwear that's in the back there, that some of them are actually used. So they, they are different, like, uh, a, sort of like kilts, uh, each of the different patterns are to certain families or certain villages. Um, and you can, yeah, basically there's a bunch of different things. Uh, you can even buy them online. Um, through the uh, Nimpod export, but it was really cool to, to go through. And uh, I was being a bit bad, uh, bad taking a picture. You're not supposed to take pictures in there because they, they've had people steal patterns and steal uh, designs from that site. So they, they've been trying to protect the uh, artisanal side of things. Um, yeah, just a really, really cool place to go through. I bought a few things from my uh, sister's daughter uh, just, just for, for a souvenir. This is a museum in the center of Antigua. Uh, I probably took the yeah, Cooperación Española um, that I went through and, and took a visit. Uh, it was really cool to see. It's it's a it's an art gallery. It's a museum. It's a school. It's a it's it's a really really nice place to go through, and uh, just a bunch of randomness. Uh, the, the art gallery was full of a bunch of different artists. This is I think one from. Bolivia um, and just yeah just a really really beautiful spot to, to take a visit uh, when you're in in the in town and this is uh, just a typical little one of the churches in town there there was a cost to visit this one um, that I didn't go into just yeah just but there is there's a lot of historic sites that you can visit through Antigua. You could probably spend uh, a week easy in Antigua and still not see everything. It's, it's a surprisingly dense uh, city with a lot, of, a lot of history and a lot of stuff. This is the walk up to the view. Uh, unfortunately, it was a hazy day, so right straight ahead is a volcano, but you can barely see it through the clouds. I see Greg uh, peering up. Can you see it today? I can barely just make out the outline of Agua. Yeah. I haven't seen Akatanango or Fuego in, a, in about four or five days. Oh, yeah. From Antigua. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, just a beautiful view, uh, despite even the, the, the haze. Uh, a lot of tourists, but at the same time, a lot of uh, locals that was, or, or uh, townies that were visiting. Uh, and again, dogs are everywhere. Uh, yeah. And that's a section you can see the cobblestone streets um, and just the architecture of the area. It's, it's a really, really nice. You can see uh, there's a lot of pride or a lot of, of uh, you know, people are, are very conscious of, of looks in Antigua particularly. So it's a very, very clean. There's no garbage everywhere. It's, it's not your typical Guatemalan city in that side. Uh, Café Nose. I think that's the right name. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, a little uh, speakeasy type thing uh, that was popular back in the day with uh, 
if you wanted to talk a took a joint and that was one of the locations um a nice place so this is one of the four corners of the central park um there's there's a lot of buildings so this uh used to be the capital like the the federal building and now it's the city hall if i'm not mistaken greg and uh yeah that's the municipality and then i bet you have a picture on the other side of the park yeah, so that's inside the park, kind of zoomed in, people selling stuff. I, I This is 200 pictures of, I've got like 400 and some pictures in a different album. So it's, I'm limited on the pictures. Uh, this is the fanciest McDonald I've ever eaten at. <laughs> the Antigua, Antigua McDonald. If you, even, if you, even if you don't eat uh, McDonald's go to the McDonald's it's worth visiting just for the for the the sight of the fanciness of that uh, McDonald's is really really cool uh, to see tourist bus uh, they're loud colorful uh, uh, rigs uh, most of them are old uh, US uh, buses so it's funny because they're all painted up and all beautiful but then they take off and it's just a big old plume of diesel smoke on the back because they're still old old school buses they're they're yeah uh say it yeah chicken buses yeah yeah and that's about it for the trip folks uh as you can see this is the pictures of uh flight back uh this would be again mexico city uh the reason I don't have a lot of pictures of Guatemala City is because both of my flights in and out were after sunset. So I didn't really get, or before sun, uh, sunrise. So I didn't get a whole lot of pictures of Guatemala City, but um, yeah, yeah. Mexico City is massive. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm, I've already busted the time. So sh sorry, Sharon, on that. Uh, I hope you folks enjoyed it. Um, I went through really, really fast. If you have any questions at all, uh, don't be shy. You can either ask them now or um, you, can, you can send me a message on Facebook. Um, Greg, uh, being that he's one of the uh, a local now, uh, could probably chime in on, on something that I don't have an answer for you right now. Um, but yeah, um, sometimes a lot of people kind of ask for, for budget. Um, all in. I'm trying to do the quick mental math of converting it to US dollars. 20, it was under 2,500 US. It would have probably been about 22. Uh, and that's, I'm, I'm talking everything, everything including the flight and everything. Uh, getting seat sales is probably one of the big things to, to, to try to get to Guatemala City for cheap. I think my flight was 700 Canadian. So what is that like 500 US? Um, and that's like a decent price. It's not like a killer deal, but it's not the full price that can sometimes be a, like a thousand US. Um, it's probably cheaper for you folks. You know, I'm from coming in from Canada. Uh, it adds up a lot of cost, but if you're coming down from Miami, it might be a lot less. But um, yeah, it's a really, really affordable trip. That loop that you're seeing there is... Um, 1200 kilometers so uh what is that 800 miles um and the way i kind of planned uh the trip it, it's basically i did one day of, of driving one day of visiting the place i was and then another day of driving visiting where i was and well it all depends what you want to do but you know for me to drive 10 days in a row you just get saturated and you wouldn't, you're not experiencing the place. Um, it's nice to take a full day to, to actually see where you are. Um, yeah. So it was a, it was a really nice trip. Um, there's a bunch of other places I want to go eventually in uh, Guatemala, but uh, at the same time, the planet is big and there's a whole lot of places. Um, Colombia was, was calling me this year, but I, I wasn't able to organize enough of the logistics quick enough to do that trip this year. And uh, well, with COVID and how things are looking, we'll see uh, when's the next time we'll be able to travel. Uh, but um, yeah, I absolutely loved uh, Guatemala and I would highly recommend anybody to, to, to go there. Language barrier, if 
it's only a barrier if you if you make it uh, a barrier in a sense that a lot of a lot of times you know they'll they already know what you want when you go into a shop uh, so it's it's more or less uh, I would say install Google Translate on your phone and don't be shy to talk in individual words you know like you know quanta questa you know how much and just pointing at things you know and or even just the dollar you know how much they'll most places they'll help you out so it's uh, it was really really nice so you don't really speak spanish then no no I, I like like i said i've got i've got 100 days in a row of duolingo like i've uh -huh. got very very basic broken up spanish uh uh it, i've got just enough that i can you know cuatro cresta una habitacion like you know how much yeah you know just you just need the really really basic basic stuff to be able to get through and um it's interesting actually like near atlitan atlitan spanish is actually their second language so that so in a sense that you're speaking a second or third language but they're also speaking a second or third language so um you know it's just one of those things they, they're very understanding or at least at, from what i saw they're very very understanding and that little kid that's like eight years old in simuk champi was speaking english quite well actually uh because a lot of the um jesuit and uh a lot of there's a lot of uh religious uh religious um groups that they work in those areas that um have language schools and are te trying to teach the 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 youth uh english to basically to open up their uh, cultural horizon so uh yeah which is the good period during the year for uh, such a trip so greg can probably confirm um their wet season sort of ends uh late november and and then starts up again in in april may so anytime around that like it's winter that you want to be uh uh summer is uh not necessarily a lot warmer but it's a lot more wet uh if if greg can confirm that october through uh or excuse me may through october is the rain season yeah uh but it only rains for you know an hour or two usually in the afternoon however there are parts of the country that do get uh serious so it, uh, it can be challenging uh to come during that time if you want to travel the entire country mm, okay yeah thanks uh charles came in february which is actually probably one of the best months to come You got a delay in your in your video and, and <laughs> oh, I have delay. Okay, let me get closer. Oh, there you're starting to get better. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's one of those things that you know a quick Google search will often tell you. You know, it's it's often one of the things that if when I start looking at a destination, I'll do, you know, when's the best time to visit, and and it's often trying to find that dry season that's not the heat wave season and it's often the what we consider spring and autumn uh of those areas so uh yeah generally temperatures are the same year around yeah okay cool thanks yeah fuel fuel was available almost everywhere it was really nice for that yeah does anybody else have any questions? Greg, you want to add anything? Um, yeah, like I said, I put together just a quick little fact sheet. Um, like I said, I'm a motorcycle guide and I'm also a volcano uh, guide. So Charles, uh, next time you come here, you said that you almost had a heart attack climbing up to New Uh Make sure you get out and exercise a lot before. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll just throw up a quick fact sheet and uh, I'll let you guys. Okay, can everybody see that? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
So um, first things first, I'm going to do a shameless plug of my presentation on May 16th. <laughs> Uh, traveling the Americas. Uh, I'm going to more or less be talking generally about logistics, uh, expectations versus realities, how to prepare, lessons learned. It won't really be a whole lot of detail about locations, but how to create your own trip. Um, because we are talking about motorcycles, uh, these are the primary uh, places to rent motorcycles. These are the three primary companies, uh, all of them located here in Antigua. Mm -hmm. uh, Charles went with Mag Tours. They're an excellent company. They maintain their bikes very well. Uh, Motor Tours, they're kind of more of a hodgepodge, uh, kind of mix of motorcycles. You never know what you're going to get. And then uh, Samoon, uh, they more, more or less focus on ATVs, but they do have some motorcycles for rent to include the BMW 650s. Um, you already talked about getting here. The, the only international airport or the main international airport is in Guatemala City. There's really nothing to see in Guatemala City itself. So um, once you get here, it's probably best just to come straight to Antigua to start your trip. Uh, otherwise, if you're crossing over by land, we're surrounded by Mexico, Belize, Honduras, and El Salvador. I, um, Antigua, getting to Antigua, you can get a shuttle 24 hours a day from the airport. And uh, Antigua is a uh, UNESCO heritage site. It was founded as a UNESCO heritage site in 1973. Uh, that's why everything is old and you don't see anything new. Uh, to include the cobblestones. Um, there's a nice picture of Volcan Fuego from uh, my campground uh, where I take, take you guys up to almost uh, 4,000 meters to camp and watch the volcano explode. We have two active volcanoes just outside of Antigua. I highly recommend coming to see those on, in, when you do come down. Uh, you just need your passport if you're flying. Uh, it's got to have at least six months left on your passport. Uh, there's no medical requirements, no shots or anything are required uh, coming from Canada, US, Europe, et cetera, et cetera. And then when to come, okay, the best time is uh, December through April. Uh, April is going to be probably the most expensive time to come because that is uh, Easter. Uh, every weekend uh, for a month leading up to Easter, uh, they have processions throughout Antigua. And then the last week leading up to Easter, every day there are processions. Uh, that is when every hotel is booked and the prices are doubled. And like I said, dry season, April is, like I said, most expensive. But uh, December through February, it would be the time that I would recommend coming uh, to Guatemala. That's when it's, uh, you're just over the, the rain season, so the roads aren't so dusty, and uh, the weather is absolutely perfect. And that's that. Right on, thanks. I had a quick question about the shuttle from Guatemala City to Antigua. Is that uh, something you pre-planned or do you just kind of grab a taxi or how do you how do you make sure that you get there without getting scammed on the price? Yeah. So right when you uh, get into the arrival uh, at the airport, uh, like in the arrival section, uh, there's, a, there's a kiosk and what you do is you go there you pay at the kiosk and you get a voucher for the, sh the the taxi so so then you're not you're not dealing with money in the taxi halfway down the trip like it's you're paid and it's also it protects you in the sense because you, your ride is recorded like but he won't be able to drive you into a dirt road and hide you away because he's he's registered you're you're they know you exist uh so yeah you just basically as soon as you come off the plane uh, another thing that just in the ar arrival that I did, I mentioned earlier about a SIM card, um, 20 US dollars gets you a SIM card and three gigs of data. And I forget how many minutes of c communication, but the kicker, Facebook does not count in your data. Uh, D 
Deezer Music does not count in your data. WhatsApp does not count in your data. So you, you pay 20 bucks, you get a SIM card with a local phone number, but you set up your, your WhatsApp. I was on the top of the Tikal Tower talking to uh, Gustavo for 20 minutes and it didn't cost me a penny of my data because, because the WhatsApp is, is unlimited use. Um, I think personally, I think that's a killer deal. Uh, just, just to be able to have data access almost anywhere. Um, and honestly, yeah, a few section in the mountains, I didn't have any cell phone reception, but pretty much anywhere that people live, there is cell phone reception. It was actually funny going through tiny little villages. And if you notice, you'll see an, a seven year old lady walking down the road and she's got a cell phone to her ear and you're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Like it's, you know, it is modern times. Uh, you know, the, there's cell range pretty much almost everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the return trip, sorry for the return trip. I took the, the little, it's a Mayan, uh, s a silhouette for the, uh, what is it called for the, the, you, you'll be able to, to get the name of the shuttle bus there, uh, Greg, the one that leaves from Antigua. Um, Oh, there, there are uh, tons At of uh, shuttle services, though. At trans um, uh, Probably one of them, yeah. 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 There, there, are, there are a bunch of them. On. Every hotel, every tour agency will be able to offer you a shuttle. We yeah. also uh, have Uber available here. Yeah. I think it was 20 US. It, it, it wasn't a whole lot of money, uh, even for an actual proper taxi, like my own taxi from uh, Gautama City to to the little hotel or the little uh, resort I stayed in. Yeah, it's 20 US. Uh, it's pretty decent for, for the distance. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap us up. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to ask or say? Fantastic job, Charles. We appreciate you pulling this together. Right on. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, congratulations.